you have any comment, public comment on items not on the agenda. All right, seeing none, I believe Adrian is our first presenter. Good morning, commissioners. Is morning. the audio OK? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Excellent. Uh, so what you have before you is a professional services agreement with Black Knight Security. Um, again, this is uh, around our operations with non congregate sheltering. The, the current PSA that you have is for a relatively short period of time, not to extend beyond May 10th, which is the current um, approval period that we are operating under with FEMA. And so then we just reapprove. Is that I know you explained this to me before, and I'm sorry, I'm forgetting. No, not a problem at all. Um, so this is uh, this is essentially uh, our first stab at this. Uh, what we're, I'm working with Dave Wall to do a limited solicitation for our next 30-day um, period, uh, and then we'll look at a probably a, a more formal RFP process for what we believe to be the long term. Uh, I gotcha. Thank you, Adrian. So uh, in terms of the the scope of services here would this all as i read it, it it didn't indicate that this would be so broad as to also include the uh, forthcoming sleepy in is that correct this is just locate just focus on well i'll let you answer Yes, so uh, so currently we we do have um, locations that we are utilizing that are not the sleepy in uh, while we're while we're doing the remediation and abatement at that location, and so this is um, a relatively narrow scope, mainly at the request of of the hotel owner um, for that location. Adrian, so, oh, sorry, Dave, go ahead. Well, I I was just wanting uh, maybe. A, Adrian to walk us through how this looks on the ground and and this uh, the again the the PSA uh, in the scope of services talks about this a bit but um, uh, so you have someone who is isolated or uh, uh, quarantined jeez it's cat second sorry uh, anyway uh, uh, isolated or quarantined at uh, at one of these locations, the person who's in isolation or quarantine does not want to stay there um, and leaves. What happens then? Sure, the the security is not there to detain anyone, um, and in fact, uh, will not detain anyone. They are mainly there to ensure that um, individuals don't who are not supposed to be there. Um, don't uh, trespass on the on the facility, but then also they act as kind of that that watch out so that if someone does decide to leave that they can notify the health department. Um, the, the reason that they are there is that they're under a health officer's order to isolate or quarantine um, per the health officer's order. And so really it's it's a mechanism of communicating back to the health department at which time they attempt to locate and uh, and talk to the individual to to convince them to go back to the isolation or quarantine situation for their own safety, but also for the community safety. OK, thank you, a Adrian. When do you expect we'll be uh, looking at the lease on the sleepy in? Uh, I've, I've been seeing emails back and forth. Um, I think at this point in time, uh, the earliest that it can get to you guys would be at the Tuesday admin, but um, I think we're we're coming to the finish line on that. Great. And that's and you feel like the schedule is, is working out for all everyone involved. I just want I want I, to make yeah. sure we're, we're not our board isn't holding things up. No, no, I, I don't believe so. I think we're we're all working cooperatively and collaboratively towards a, a common goal. And uh, our team has been able to work with um, the current owner of the Sleepy Inn to, to start getting folks in there to, to start looking at how we're going to, um, as quickly as possible, make that uh, available for occupancy. Great, thank you. And this is Vicki. I can confirm it's going to be on Tuesday's admin. We got the final version from Dale yes, late yesterday, and it's currently with Anna, and Erica has already reviewed, so we're getting close to getting it on our agenda for Tuesday. Great, good work. Well then, I, I move to approve the professional service agreement of Black Neck Security. Second. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Well done. Thank, thank you, Adrian, for coming thank by. Thank you. Thanks, Adrian. You bet, thank you. 
All right, next up is uh, Jason Emery. Good morning. 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 Well, this request is to make a purchase to expand our cybersecurity capabilities. Um, we currently use a product called Sophos Endpoint Security with an add-on called Intercept X. And what that provides is endpoint security in all of our servers and workstations. As you're obviously well aware, we've spread out quite a lot in the last few weeks. Um, and what that does is it does expand our attack surface from bad guys uh, out there attempting to infiltrate our systems and steal our data and do other nefarious things to us. Um, what this does is this allows us, it's a, an additional offering that leverages what we already have in place and adds what's called a managed threat response service. So what it does is it uh, increases the uh, awareness at all of our endpoints um, of potentially malicious activity. So this is beyond things like malware, viruses, things like that. This is actually um, human threat actors doing things that uh, are potentially malicious, but aren't, don't follow typical patterns. And what it does is it allows every single endpoint, whether they're in the network or at home, like you all are, um, to have that capability and it feeds it up to the Sophos um, machine learning engine where it's analyzed and when things are picked up as suspicious, um, it actually, they have a 24 seven security team that monitors all that. And that's really the, the strength of a solution like this. Um, normally you would do this in house, but you'd have to have your own security team. Very, very expensive. You know, you're talking $100,000 plus positions uh, this is a 24-7 global response, so this allows us to work with those individuals if they do find indicators of threat, um, and they come and work with our staff remotely um, to remediate that stuff quickly. And that's kind of the key with any good security is more than likely you're going to have some sort of incident at some point and be able to detect it and remediate it very quickly uh, is the key. So. Ultimately, this is something that I had hoped to do um, anyway in FY21, but with the nature of what we're up against right now, I think it's important to move on this now. Um, I absolutely think this is uh, qualifies for a COVID uh, type spend. And I was able to negotiate this down about $14,000 um, over what the retail cost of that is. Um, so I think it's a good value. And it does, what this does is allows us to also kind of do a proof of concept too. So if we find that the service does have the value that I think it will, um, you know, we'll be able to prove that out for kind of a long-term investment, you know, after hopefully things go back to normal. Jason, so uh, in terms of this being in the category of a COVID-19 spend, uh, are you thinking this could possibly be reimbursable? Yes, I, I feel strongly that it would be a reimbursable uh, expense um, from my understanding of, of sources that we're looking at for, for funding because it is certainly in direct response to actions we've had to take, you know, in response to COVID. Great. Well, thank, thanks for being proactive. Uh, I would move that we approve the purchase of Sophos Managed Threat Detection Services. Second, thanks so much. Thanks for taking us $15,000. Yeah, well done, Jason. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Nice. Thanks. Thank you. And I just wanted to jump in at a, at a pause here. Uh, Laura Lundquist, did you join us from the Missoula Current? Yeah, I'm on. Okay. I just wanted to make sure we knew you were, you were here in case you had questions. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Laura. All right, Vicki, you're, you're up next. So this is a, a request for you to approve um, uh, employment agreement beginning April 30th of this year and expiring in April 30th of 2023. Um, I have um, told Andrew that you are looking for a uh, succession planning for him. Um, to prepare for you. Um, other than that, I think uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. Is there some audio problems? Are you guys? I couldn't hear Vicki very well. 
I think it's feedback from somebody that maybe isn't muted. Okay. Um, I don't have any questions. I I really appreciate it, Andrew, throughout, and especially now, even at two in the morning when uh, he's analyzing and crunching, and I so appreciate him. Um, and yes, I, I move to approve the employment agreement. Yeah, I want to. I want to just add to that one, Andrew. Really appreciate your dedication, especially of late. Your uh, ease to work with. You always have any information we're after. Super smart. I feel like we're really lucky to have you. And uh, thanks for being part of our team. Hardly uh, Thank you very much. Uh, I think I do okay unless you ask me to put away laundry or call it climbing stairs. So. <laughs> yeah, and Andrew, given that we're in a crisis, if you could stay away from dangerous activity like household chores, that would really be yeah. great. Just, I'll, just I'll ride your motorcycle, you. maybe a little rock climbing or kayaking or something. Like <laughs> no household chores for goodness. Okay, sake. got it. I'll I'll okay. pass that on to my wife. Okay. Yeah. Okay, I will. Uh, was that a motion earlier? That was a motion. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll second that and also uh, uh, also affirm to you, Andrew, thanks for all of your dedicated service and hard work, uh, even in the midst of uh, crisis right now. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll give you a, 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 a slide rule that uh, has no sharp edges on it and uh, all that good. Thank you very much, Dave. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank all right, you. all in favor. Hi. Great. Glad to have you for another few years, Andrew. Thank you. Nice. Thanks, Mr. Corny. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get get the right pronunciation to Andy so she doesn't screw it up. Yeah, like provide us a phonetic uh, uh, <laughs> spelling of your name. So. All right. Okay. Well, now we have a. It looks like a standard. Uh, a standard agreement with partnership an amendment to a standard agreement amendment thank you thank you <laughs> <laughs> a standard amendment to a standard agreement <laughs> yeah yeah um, looks like a toothy one uh yeah i would move that we uh, approve the amendment to the employment agreement second all in favor aye great so it is done Okay, some correspondence. Andrew, we're just going to review the letter that you sent off. Do you have anything to add? You know, I, I don't have anything to add really, except that uh, it appears as though the, the the house is going to vote today on a, on this third stim, or th stimulus 3.5, and looks like that's going to fly through, which provides funding for mostly small business administration loans and hospitals. We've been left out again. It looks like we, the president at least committed to a, including states and local governments in a fourth stimulus package. Um, the Senate leadership seems to be uh, opposing that. Uh, we've got a lot of Democrats, Democratic leadership and speaker in the House or the minority leader in the Senate and Senator Tester committing to supporting local governments and states as their needs grow. It's a huge problem for many states, including New York. Um, they, we desperately need funds to continue our operations and providing essential services to our constituents. So it's a, it's a battle. And, uh, this, I think the, the Letter accurately refre reflects our some of our expenses to date, which we're tracking. It doesn't address lost revenues, but uh, we'll continue to fight the fight. Thanks for your work on this. Uh, so the House is scheduled to vote on this today. Yes, yeah, on 3.5 today. Not sure when four will come out, but yeah. yeah. It could be a big help to a lot of small businesses who got cut out of the. Oh, yeah, it's couple of rounds. yeah, it's. It was intended for small businesses originally, and then they ran through that money very quickly. And there were some businesses that were taking it that really shouldn't have. And so there's. But, you know, the argument can be made. Uh, 
a person without a job is just in big need as one working for a larger company as a smaller company. So it, uh, I'm glad they got some more stimulus money into the hands of the small business owners. Great, thanks. And just so it's clear for the people on the call, that letter was signed and we're just ratifying that today because we needed to get that letter off prior to today's meeting. Good. All right, uh, other discussion items, communication needs, requests? We're all good. So um, is Chris on the line? He is not. It. He's participating in the MAKO call today. Oh, great. The MAKO um, town meeting that's happening at 10. Okay, so I, I thought I was going to be signing a letter. Uh, it's just an invite to get people onto this uh, uh, re-entry working group that uh, Grant from MEP is pulling together. Um, do you know about that, Vicki? I've seen some emails going back and forth on it. I think he felt like it did not have to since you were the one signing the letter that we didn't have to bring it to admin. OK, that's okay. kind of what I was thinking. I just was wait, hadn't seen it yet. <laughs> so okay. it was but was, they, we're going to just brief the commissioners on what it meant. OK. All right, so do we have other. Uh, we can jump to the COVID stuff. We have a lot to talk through given what the governor said yesterday. I just have one thing before we go to that. Oh, sure, sure. Good, um, next Thursday, um, a week, actually it's two weeks from today, would be the mayor CAO meeting. Do you want to keep that on the agenda? And if so, I'll start thinking about agenda items. Uh, it seems like there there was an item or two that we might want to chat with the mayor about, so maybe we keep it on the agenda and uh, or keep it on the calendar and and talk about agenda items. Yeah, I think that's I, I think we definitely should. And could we just send agenda items to you, Vicki? Yes, please. And I'll get it into civic clerk for Emmy. Great, thanks. What was the date, Vicki? It will be on May the 7th. I'm sure we'll have something. Oh, definitely. Uh, well, yeah, one other item just before we go on to COVID-19. This was uh, in response to a phone call I got from a constituent yesterday wondering what uh, what the staking action, uh, uh, as in uh, stakes being poked into the ground, uh, mm. uh, was related to out on Tamarack and Juniper. And I, I touched bases with Shane Stack and, and as I suspected, uh, it looks like the uh, much anticipated no parking signs the are done. Signage, so, yeah, great. Yeah, progress. Good, I'm, thank, I'm glad to hear about that. We want, may want, I believe Fish, Wildlife and Parks is coming in next month. Um, we may want to make sure we understand what the um, outreach plan is for that so that if there's anything we need to do, because that will be our last meeting with them until July. So oh. we, we may want to make sure that that gets on their agenda. I'll make, I'll send um, Chet an email just asking him to make sure that's on there. That's a great idea. Yeah, Vicki, this is Chad. I'm on the call. Um, that is an item I know they were interested in talking about as well. So we'll have that. I need to just get it into Civic Clerk. Uh, and, and we're also talking with Three Rivers and Randy Arnold as well about what that outreach looks like. So there's a few pieces in the works. We'll hear more from them. Okay, thanks, Chad. Okay, Chad, you want to move to the next next item? Great. So, uh, anybody want to start up? I would just let you know that we have an SLT meeting tomorrow at 9:30, and we will be. Um, we were going to have a COVID update from Adrian and maybe Ellen. Now, with the governor's orders, Ellen may not be able to join us because she's 
um, working on getting some health officer orders prepared. Um, uh, I can just let you know from the Mac Colin one, you can add to this. The city is pretty much going to stay in the same status they are right now. They're keeping City Hall closed um, and employees still working from home. Um, I was thinking after our SLT meeting and we heard from staff that senior leadership, we could talk with you on our Friday call. Um, Friday evening call on how you yeah. want to proceed, but if you could have more a discussion sooner than that. Um, there was also an officer call at three on Friday that we could forward you. I, it's just really up to what you guys are looking for. I think waiting till later on Friday when everyone's had a chance to chat would be most useful for us. So we. Yeah, I, I see no reason. Great. I see no reason to rush into anything. I feel like uh, the systems that we have in place to deliver services and conduct businesses um, is going pretty well. And uh, to deviate from that, I just want to make sure all the departments and and staff are on board with how we proceed. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thoroughly on board with uh, business as unusual as it was referred to this morning, at least for Till we get to hear from everybody and, and regroup and talk about it again, but there's definitely no uh, hurry to change because some services aren't being delivered. We we've, we've seem to have found our stride and uh, let's just maintain and we'll, we'll revisit on Friday. I, um, I'd like to be able to include kind of a statement to that effect in the JIC summary in the Missoula County section that any any modifications to our operations will be communicated uh, at least a couple days in advance. Are you guys mm -hmm. that? That sounds good. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Any, any anything else? So we're Jai yeah. Oops, sorry, Dave. I, I was just going to uh, offer that Amanda and I and Melissa have taken an, some additional look at some of the COVID relief numbers, and I don't know if this oh, was great. a meeting where you yeah. had planned. Sure, 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 sure. Okay. Bring it up. That'd be wonderful to hear about. Thank you. Okay. Um, well, I'll, I'll probably just hand it off to Amanda. She's got, I think, the ability to share her screen and show you what those numbers look like if we now factor in the PHC. Um, okay. Month that won't be necessary for this fiscal year, so I'll just let her dive in and explain what she's got there as far as numbers, and we can answer any questions that you've got. Great. Thank you, Chad. All right. Um, I'll get this shared, and we can all take a look at it. Um, let me just find the right spreadsheet. Um, can everyone see that okay? It's not too small, <laughs> hopefully. You make it a little bit bigger. Um, so what we've done is we've walked through um, a projection for fiscal year 20 and um, then an anticipated sustainment budget for next year. Um, so what we've reflected here is the reduction of uh, the PHC contract, um, the rollover from fiscal year 19, um, the additional rental assistance payment that's already been made, and then the $100,000 transfer for the COVID-19 fund that is made from not um, moving forward with the PHC project for this year. Um, so that puts us... Uh, all told, with a projected ending available cash balance of just over $100,000. So what I did for uh, the next fiscal year was increased the amount of um, county participation funds available in the CAF um, from $821,003, um, where it was before, which is, this is the budgeted number here, to $835,500, and that will cover uh, all of the contracts um, that were awarded last year, with the exception of Word, which will not be reapplying, and the inclusion of HomeWord, um, and moving that from the financial admin fund. If we have that contract level amount and um, continue to make our payment to the CDBG revolving loan fund for the Missoula Food Bank, I'm projecting by the end of next year, we should have about 86,000 
dollars left over, um, which will allow us to continue into fiscal year 22 with the higher award level for county participation in the CAF fund until the tax dollars kind of catch up on that. So um, I think that gets us the $100,000 to the COVID-19 fund and also gets us uh, some more award money for the CAF fund going into next year and beyond. So Amanda, we can you describe where the, I mean, earlier it had looked like it might be in the 148 range. Where did that difference go? And I'm, I'm apologize for not seeing it on my own. No, no problem. Um, and I, this was a question that we anticipated. Uh, so um, when you had looked at this previously and had the discussion previously, um, that $48,000 was kind of the initial amount we had found had we honored all of uh, the contracts for this year, including the PHC contract. Um, with trying to move um, the Homeward, um, particip Homeward Award into this fund and uh, make sure that that was paid for and to make sure that it's also paid for for next year so we don't have to reduce the award amount um, in the CAF fund for fiscal year 2020. 22 when it goes back to a more competitive process um, we have left that 48,000 so that we can bump up um, the award amount for next year and then the following year uh, in the fund so um, that's why it, it reduces back to a hundred thousand dollars and it, it's still getting money uh, out into the community um, just through a slightly different mechanism of mm -hmm. the CAF fund okay thank yeah. you so just to recap, we have the ability to move $106,000, 106233 uh, into the uh, COVID-19 relief fund. And actually, we are going to move $100,000. The 106233 here, that's the ending cash. Should we do that transfer? And that's what allows us to be able to carry forward with the higher amount oh. in years forward. <clears throat> Got it. Okay. Any other questions? No, this is great, Amanda. Thank you so much. For yeah, thank you. Thank you, Amanda. Thanks for yeah. unraveling this. Yeah. <laughs> so um, I guess this is a question for everybody who's on here right now, and a Andrew here too. Um, at what point can we decide if we want to be able to use some of the land sale money for COVID or do we need to put it right towards uh, dealing with our immediate cash flow issues uh, or keep it where it is um, given that there's the potential for some, I mean, do we want to wait on these decisions till we hear what we, what the governor's task force comes up with? Um, what do you all think about that? My, I guess my inclination would be to not uh, not roll any of the the land sales dollars into the the same sort of COVID nineteen relief uh, fund as we are with the CAF, and to consider that for possible use of uh, addressing cash flow, and then also I think there are some major unanswered questions relative to the. At the state level, the 125 billion and uh, and how that will trickle down or not uh, locally. David, just want to say I really wish it was 125 billion. What? <laughs> <laughs> 1.25 1. 1. 1. billion. Excuse yeah. me. <laughs> we would, wouldn't it be good though? <laughs> you didn't hear that part of uh, Mitch McConnell's speech. You tuned out too soon <laughs> last night. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy. It's easy. That all that all sounds uh, very reasonable to me. I just wanted to kind of put it out there, and and maybe there's some. I don't know what these specific triggers would be. I'd look to you, Andrew. But are there some things we could look for that if we could get from the state through this 1.25 billion that would actually allow us to move some of that land sale money to a COVID relief fund? Are there are there certain benchmarks we could set or things we could look for? You know, I think it's it's sort of a fluid situation right now, Josh, and I'm sorry for not giving you a specific answer to your That's question, all right. but it's, you know, it, it, we're, we've already spent 
about six hundred thousand uh, dollars of county funds on on the COVID response. We anticipate spending in excess of five million dollars by September thirtieth, the end of the federal fiscal year. So those are all expenses we hadn't anticipated. We will yeah. get re reimbursed for a good portion of that, but it's it's a cash flow issue right now, and for sure. we've got a little over six hundred thousand dollars in the land sales account, which is a is cash it's it's not an ongoing yeah. revenue it's just cash right now so if we deplete it use it for a specific purpose it's gone if we use it for cash flow and then reimburse it at some point in the future we still have it mm -hmm. it's kind of a, it's our rainy day fund it's something that you know i referred to as being able to borrow from one fund to meet the needs of another fund so it's uh yeah I would be hesitant to to use it right now. I think there's some things that will develop as we get closer to fiscal year end that may help us. You know, certainly determination of, of where the state's funds will go. If we get any help from the federal government, if we're able to enter the financial markets and take care of some of our uh, capital expenditures that have already occurred, um, those will all be very positive things. And could, uh, could Andrew, could you or Adrian, if she's still on the line, speak to that sort of FEMA reimbursement schedule? When when do we expect we might get some of this money back? So I, I am on the, the line, um, this is Adrian. So obviously uh, the, the scale and scope of the of the COVID pandemic across the nation um, is causing FEMA to do things in a different way, yet undetermined. Um, so I, I can't really answer your question as to when we would expect it. Uh, I can give you kind of uh, maybe a best case, maybe a worst case scenario. We just received funding from our 2018 major disaster declaration relative to flooding. We received that. Oh, Adrian cut out. Oh, shoot. I think what she was getting to was the, um, we just received a check and I believe it, I'm not, she referred to the flooding. It may have been the flooding. I thought it was for the fires two years ago. So. FEMA's reimbursements would take, you know, well over a year and sometimes up to two years to, to actually come. Um, there's there's some new standards that are hopefully in place for this current situation that we're in. Portion we're hoping to get reimbursed on a 30 day uh, process. Much much of it will be done much later in the year. So I I don't know. There's a lot of uncertainty as to the FEMA reimbursements and and whether or not we will they will have money when we need it so so andrew what i'm getting from that is that the worst case scenario is two years and there's been talk of some 30 days but we haven't actually seen anything like that yet is that correct that 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 would be an accurate statement yes so what okay so what i'd like to just toss out there is maybe an, an idea uh, if if we start seeing some of this 30-day fema reimbursement I, I'd like to consider if that happens and that's a big capital if I, if that happens, I'd like to consider being able to use some of that land sale money in our own efforts in COVID relief. Uh, and, and obviously, if we don't, then we have to do whatever we can to make it by in terms of cash flow. And I, I get that that's a, a priority. I thought I just like to hold that out there. I thought the 30 day uh, refund was only specific to the sleepy end activity. Oh. I think you're right, Warren. <laughs> so, so this is, is that, Adrian. Is I don't right? know. Can Adrian, you, you went away. You you went away for a whole bunch of what you were saying. But am I back now? Yeah, yeah. We lost you when you said worst case scenario, and then you you faded away. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's a good way to leave you hanging, right? <laughs> it is. It um, really is. So, so Juan, you are correct in that the, the non-congregate sheltering activity, which will be a substantial expense, um, is being uh, tracked on a 30-day snapshot with the anticipation that we would get um, immediate reimbursement for that. The other activities, which fall into category B, kind of emergency response out of our EOC, they are looking at how they do that in a more responsive way as kind of pay as you go, but that has yet to be determined. So then, then, then uh, thanks, Juan, you for I goofed on that one. Not the not the thirty day, but can we just hold out and see if, if there's a pay as you go be determined that turns out 
that we actually get some money back and we're still in this. I'd love to revisit this issue of using some of this money to meet our immediate local needs with our nonprofits. And if it doesn't, then we look to those that land sale fund to meet our cash flow needs. Well, and I guess I would also add, at some point, we should have a discussion of what the original intent was of any of these land sales, sale dollars, e even though they are unrestricted. Um, uh, maybe someone could help us walk through the history of, uh, of uh, the intent, because much of this was generated from sale of lands at the development park. Um, and and I think it would be instructive just to, to know a bit of the history behind the fund. Yeah, and, and Andrew, you mentioned kind of rainy day and you know, it's it's pouring. And whether, yeah. whether we're talking about needs out there in the community that nonprofits could help meet, or we're talking about our own gushing arterial wounds in terms of cash flow, there it's raining in both counts. And if we could responsibly use some of this money to address those needs, that would be fantastic. Yeah. I, I would I, also, oh, go ahead. That's fine, Andrew. Go ahead. So I would also just um, throw out there, not to be the bearer of bad news, but um, relative to expenses for other emergencies that may occur during this pandemic, uh, such as flooding or fires, where we have historically had uh, significant expenses, uh, they would not be eligible to be roped into this COVID-19 reimbursement. We would have to we would have to find that cash out of the general fund, just as a FYI. A lot of blood and fire and rain. <laughs> <laughs> but it's good now. Now we can go bankrupt, according to our Senate Majority Leader. So we've got that going for us, which is nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it's 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 going to be a challenge. It's uh, you know I I don't want to use the old stewardess expression, but yeah, we need to put our first oxygen mask, our oxygen mask on before we help others. And you know we wouldn't we won't be of any help unless we have the resources to you know as you say plug the gaping wounds right now. So I I I, I fully hear you. And then in terms of the talking about the fund and its historical use, it's been it was always seen as a one time cash fund. We, we've been using it for capital expenditures in the past. We used a lot of it uh, with the uh, the uh, the refurbishment of the county courthouse and lawns and different facilities around the county. Um, we've used it in the development park to uh, further our interests out there and the technology uh, park as well. So uh, it's it has been our rainy day fund and, and it has been kind of set aside for one time expenses, capital expenses, big dollar expenses that we've we've had in the past. So. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have anything they want to share? All right, then. Uh, it appears we may be we may be finished. Any any questions from uh, media folks out there? All right. With that, I guess we'll be uh, we'll be done, and we'll uh, talk soon. Thanks, Thank everyone.